Matthew here from AnywhereGaming.com, bringing you another Beat Matt Bat Rap. We work so you can play. Many more gaming's Beat Matt Bat Rap. Today I have been challenged by Andre. Andre has flown from Switzerland yeah. on vacation in Canada, decides while you're in Canada, you got to drop by Mini Wargaming for a battle report, right? Sure. That's right. I think Switzerland is probably up there for the furthest traveled for a battle report. But uh, I'd have to check. We need, we need to get like a big map yeah. and start pinpointing. Yeah, you know, I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I remember. And we're going to play a game of War Machine. 42 points. That's a, in Germany they play with a all these sixes, right? 36, 42, 48. So we're going to do 42 points of Kador versus Retribution. And we're going to be playing the Incursion Steamroller 2013 scenario. So let's take a look at the armies as well as the table. We're going to be playing a 42 point game today because that is common in Switzerland and Germany. So that's what I hear at least. Anyways, this Retribution army is going to be led by Epic Virus, the Cavalry Epic model. And in her battle group, or his battle group, I actually don't know if it's a guy or girl, is a Phoenix Heavy Warjack and five Light Warjacks. These are Griffins. They have Fleet, which we'll get into in a second. And the reason he brought so many is because of Synergy, which we'll also talk about soon. We've got a Destor Thane Cavalry Solo, as well as two Arcanists, or Arcanists. These are basically their repair guys. And then we've got a unit of Sentinels. These guys have Reach and Weapon Master with their unit attachment, which gives them Vengeance. And Vengeance is that if one of their guys die, somebody else can move three inches and make an attack. Now on my side, I decided I wanted to try something different. I know I usually say that because it's the case. I just like trying something different. Well, here's Epic Sorsha. That's not so different. But in her battle group is only one Warjack. We've got a Juggernaut right there. But I decided to bring two Man of War Kovniks as they are Jack, Jack Marshals. And I wanted to try out the Jack Marshall rules to see how well that works. And we've got their Jacks right with them. And we've got a full group of Winter Guard with unit attachment and the two Rocketeers as well, because hey, if you bring an Epic Sorcia, you gotta bring Winter Guard. And we've got a unit of Widowmakers. So the Jack Marshals, they have two Juggernauts and one Marauder. So we'll see how that works in this game. So looking at the scenario and the deployment, we decided to play Incursion, and that is where there are the three objectives, and then one of them disappears at the end of the first turn, and you start getting points for them at the end of the second turn. Second player, second turn, essentially. You get one point for controlling, and two points, or three points for dominating. I can't remember if it's two or three. It doesn't matter, because uh, I think in this entire game, we just control them, and nobody ever dominates them. Just a little spoiler alert right there. So we roll off and Retribution is going first. So he's just placing them in a good old gun line here. He's not worried about going first. I think he actually won the roll off and decided to go first. Normally you want to choose to go second because of um, how far back you have to deploy, seven inches as opposed to 10 inches. But because of fleet on his Griffins, that's not such a big deal. And because he has a tiered list, all of his jacks start with one focus. Now, why is that a big deal? Because in the first turn, you don't really usually fight. Well, it's because the Griffins can spend a focus to get additional movement. And so he'll be able to hand out all his focus first turn to his jacks. They'll already have a focus each, so they can spend a focus to run and the other focus to fleet. So essentially that three inches that they're further back than me will be more than made up for by that movement um, bonus that they have. On top of that, they're up against a very slow army. The Kador's jacks only have a speed of four, which uh, obviously is gonna make it a little more tough for me to get into position. So really this game is going to be about him grabbing position and then me trying to wrestle it from him. And so uh, it, it, that works in his advantage because Kador is actually better at attrition, which means if they could grab the objectives and then he has to force me from them, then uh, that would definitely be a huge disadvantage for anybody because Kador are good at just kind of sitting there and taking the damage. We just did our advanced deploy there with the Widowmakers and the Sentinels. I believe the Sentinels don't normally get advanced deploy, but they did because it was a tiered list, just in case you're wondering why that happened there. So there is our deployment. As is usual in War Machine, deployment is important, but not super important. And the first turn running is actually usually what's most important. So Retribution first turn, of course, he does exactly what I said. It's like I had seen the game already. And he hands out a focus to every Jack. This is the focus that he gets just for um, having the tier list. And then he gets a focus to each of them just from his caster as well, because the caster doesn't really need a lot of focus this turn. 
The Sentinels are going to run up, which I'm okay with. They're a threat, but with my Widowmakers, my Widowmakers can easily kill three or four of them in a turn, unless I get really unlucky. So I can kind of choose to control his guys the way I want to. But what will be hard is Synergy. So Synergy is an upkeep spell that essentially every model in the battle group, including the caster, whenever they hit with a melee attack, the next model that activates gets plus one to their melee attack and damage rolls. And that is cumulative, which means that if another one then hits, then the next guy gets plus two. And so that was why he decided to bring so many of his jacks, because with five griffins and the heavy and the phoenix and virus, you could typically you can technically get to the point where it's plus six to the attack and damage roll of something. And so you kind of use your smaller guys to not really do much damage, but just build up to one big heavy hitter. So I'm just allocating one focus because that's the only jack that is in my control area. And then the snipers, the Widowmakers, are going to start to do their work. Only needing threes to hit. Of course, I roll a double one as my very first roll. So it's just the dice are already against me here. But uh, the next one hits, of course. And the reason they're hitting on threes is because they are standing still. So they got the aiming bonus, which is kind of nice. Hitting on threes again. And I can just automatically kill them because they have the sniper rule, which allows you, instead of rolling for damage, to automatically inflict one damage. So here we go, three out of four of them did kill. And that's exactly what I said. I expect three, uh, at least three of them to do some damage. Now, when a jack is jack marshaled, it can automatically run or charge without spending focus. So that's the advantage of having a jack marshal. It can also choose to kind of, it's like it has one focus that it can't use for a power attack. In other words, it could choose to have an extra attack, or it can choose to boost an attack roll, or it can choose to boost a damage roll, or it can choose to run, or it can choose to charge, but it can't do any power attacks. On top of that, the Jack Marshals that I have in my army, these Man of War ones, they have a power booster special rule. They have a drive, in other words. If they roll for leadership and they make it their command, which is nine or less, then the jack on top of having the jack marshal bonus will also have boosted melee attack rolls which is really awesome because it means it's like they have two or three extra focus depending on how many swipes you do oh and we took a shot with the winter guard rocketeer and uh, took out one of the guys then we're going to combine against the other one but we need nines to hit even with combined because the guy's up on a hill so it's definitely giving him an advantage and then combining against the cavalry model i do hit and it's going to be dice minus two, and I do only two damage. So I could have killed him here if I rolled really well, but I could have at least done a little bit more damage than just two. But uh, it's, you know, it's just the first, it's the opening volley of the first turn, so it's not too big a deal. And my caster actually taking a very aggressive position because she's going to cast uh, Iron Flesh on these guys who also bob and weaved, which gives them the extra defense that they need. Then she's going to take a shot at this Sentinel, and she's going to boost the hit, and she barely hits it just with a nine, and then getting dice minus five and doing no damage. But the reason she's able to be aggressive is because she can cast um, Cyclone, which allows her to do another movement, and uh, you can't be targeted by free strikes with that one, not that she was in range to do that anyways. And then the other jack is just getting in position for you know, kind of the, the second hit. So which one of these objectives is going to disappear? It is the one on the right-hand side, as I pointed to that one first. So that was one, two, and three. And how come... Hold on a second. I think we took away the wrong one. Yeah, it was, must have been the other one. Yes, it was the left one. Unless the camera was just on the other side of the table. And now I'm confused because of the sudden switch of camera angles. So anyways, no points yet because you don't get points until the second player's second turn. And so now, but you can see that he's already on top of the objectives and it's his turn next. And he gets vengeance. So because the sentinels were killed, each of them gets to make a move or make a a regular three inch move not a regular just a three inch move and they get a melee attack as well but nobody was in range it's going to upkeep synergy of course because that's the whole point of his army and then he's going to charge in with some of his sentinels now a charge with weapon master can do a decent amount of damage and we'll see how fortunate he gets so obviously he's charging his sentinels in and sentinels in here that's going to be hard against the winter guard because right now they have plus four defense plus two from the bobbin weave and then plus two from iron flesh or is it Sorry, it's plus three from the Iron Flesh. So it's plus five defense right now. So they're going to be hard to hit. Not hard to kill, but very hard to hit. Unless he can do some sort of blast damage, which he doesn't really have in his army. He's engaging the Widowmakers with a run as well, because he knows it's better just to engage them. And then he also rolls a double one when he only needed a three. So I guess we're even. Then his second attack, it is Weapon Master Charge, but he rolls kind of crummy. Three threes and a one, and only does two damage. And the other one attacking a Juggernaut here, only needing a three to hit, and he gets that. 
And rolls, actually, that was pretty average. You rolled an 11 there. 10.5 is average. No, wait, 10.5 is average on three dice. This is four dice. So he rolled below average again. Charges in with his cavalry. He gets the um, try, the run by ones where he impacts. And, uh, and he kills one guy right there. But the other guy picks up his weapon. So he just disappears and you leave that one guy there. It actually works out to be my advantage too because normally the other guy would be hit. Or, no, these are simultaneous. And so now he's striking the other ones as well. And kills another Winter Guard. He has to roll nice high nines, though, which is kind of hard for him. Then he's going after the other infantry, or the other Rocketeer, and he does not hit it. Because he needed a nine, and that's a, that's a hard hit. The Arcanist is moving up, and he's going to give a focus to the Heavy Warjack. And then the Griffin is going to move up, and the Heavy Warjack is going to move up. The Phoenix, that is. And he's using the, the focus to run. So very focus efficient army here, although the Griffins have the big disadvantage of not being heavy hitters. And so he'll probably have a hard time against the heavy war checks with the, with the Griffins. But that's not the whole point. He just wants to hit so he can build up that synergy and maybe go for a killing blow against my caster or take down critical war jacks when they're in the right place. As you can see, he's grabbing those objectives and he casts his feet or pops his feet. See, watch, see, there's his foot. So feet, I kind of see both of them. So I guess it's just a foot, not a feet. And uh, his feat is basically in my basically during my turn, whenever I kill a model, another model can advance, which really wrecks up your your movement. So I upkeep Iron Flesh, and then I put four focus on that Juggernaut. That's right, four. It's because uh, she's epic and she can bond with the Warjack. And then I pop my feet, which gives basically everybody in my control area double damage, so, which is awesome. She takes a shot and fails. What was that? She moved after she shot, or she shot after she moved, or maybe she cast a spell. Not quite sure. He tramples through with one of his focus, hitting the sentinel on a six and killing it with his trampling. Actually, I needed to roll three or higher, or four or higher, because it's dice minus three, and I did that. But then his, uh, because of his feet, his guy gets to move, so it really messes up. I gotta really think about the order. Then I buy an attack and I miss. I buy another attack and I barely hit, which is good. His dice plus two against his officer, so that's 12 damage to his officer, which only has five. So the officer is gone, which is nice because it gets rid of vengeance for the sentinels. And it gets rid of the officer. So there's more than one advantage there. Buy one more attack and kill another guy, which gives him vengeance on, or gives him the ability to move up another model. Then my Jack Marshall moves up and he is going to drive. Oh, he's going to shoot first. Is he not going to drive this turn? I think he's going to drive. You do it any time in your activation. So he misses. So he's going to drive the... Um, I think it was pointed to the wrong one. What was he pointed to that one for? I don't remember. But he's driving the one more jack and, and succeeds and drives the other one succeeds. Now, it is a bit of a risk to drive because if you fail, then they lose the advantage of Jack Marshall altogether for that turn. So then he runs up and he gets boosted melee attacks and manages to roll three ones and misses. Then he gets his other initial though and he hits and needs uh, dice minus two, so he kills him. And then there's his special move because of his feet. And then I have one more attack because of the Jack Marshall rule, but it does not get boosted melee attacks because it's only the initial attacks that get boosted. But I do kill him anyways. And then he, he gets his extra movement and he moves further into my Widowmakers just to make sure they can't fire at all. Then my other Jack moves in gets boosted melee attacks because of the Jack Marshall rule, and then it does boosted damage because he charged, and that was this, the Jack Marshall thing, and we're having a problem with our marker there. And he knocks 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 damage from one solid hit there. Then he hits him again, and that's definitely a hit, and he kills that guy, which allows him to move another guy up, so he moves his griffin up here, which I think is good because then I'm able to charge him or at least run up here and try to engage him. I need to protect my caster, which is obviously going to be hard because he gets all these free movements everywhere. And a model can only move once as a result of that feat, by the way. So, but as you can see, I'm killing enough of his army that the rest of his army is able to move. Then uh, my winter guards surround his cavalry model, the Destor Thane guy, because they get combined melee attack because of the UA, which is nice, although still hard to do. So we got four of them attacking, only needing twos to hit, but we're going to be dice minus seven, and I roll three, so no damage there. Then combining against the jack and uh, dice minus six, and I do get a good five damage against his one, but he does have shields, so it only goes into those. Oh, but it's double damage. That's right. I almost forgot. So that was ten instead of five. Then attacking the griffin, and that's why we did so much damage against the other griffin. Those dice minus two doubled, so that uh, that's nine minus two, seven, so it becomes fourteen. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, other, fourteen damage, just from that combined shot against them. So nice and good. 
Then we get the other Jack Marshall moving up, and he is going to just look pretty. Then the Widowmakers combine against that, or they don't do combined, but they're all teaming up on that Sentinel. They block line of sight so the other guy can move without getting free strikes. The one is attacking and misses, the second one attacks and misses, and the third one attacks and misses. But the other one gets to take a shot because he's no longer engaged, which is kind of nice. And he misses, so it didn't really matter. End of round two, he gets a point and I don't get any. He gets one point for the objective on the left, but the one in the middle is contested by that juggernaut. He's just barely within four inches to contest that. Or it's a flag, not an objective, whatever. And it's so he's in the lead and he can see that he's got his whole line in mind. So it's gonna, I have to really punch through in order to make sure he doesn't win just with the objectives. So we'll see what happens there. Retribution turn three, he upkeeps synergy and he needs to hit really hard at this point. Both our feats are gone. And um, he's going to use, um, oh yes, my bonded warjack, that juggernaut. If you end your activation within two inches of him, you become stationary for a turn. And so that's what that guy was. He was stationary, so he used a focus to make him not stationary and then drop three focus on the phoenix. Sorry, on, a, on a, um, the griffin. So then his cavalry model, Destor Thane turns and attacks, but there is iron flesh and bobbin weave on these. We need a tens to hit and he fails. Then the arcanist or arcanist, Wherever you larve, if you like tomato, then it's arcanist. And if you like tomato, then it's arcanist. Or maybe it's the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Arcanist moves up and gives a focus to the Phoenix Warjack, who vents steam or some equivalent. I think it's like a shockwave from his generator, which just automatically hits. So that's a perfect counter with these Winter Guard having super high defense and just outright kills them because I think it's like, uh, I think it's POW 12 that they'll get hit by. Whatever it is, it's enough to kill them without needing to roll. But it could also hurt his own guy. It doesn't, then hits his own griffin as well. And actually damages five damage, which finishes off that griffin. So he unfortunately kills his own model, but that griffin was almost dead anyway, so it didn't matter too much. Then he um, takes a strike, or he tries to hurt that juggernaut, but fails. Then he takes a swing with his extra focus and uh, does only, I think, two damage, yeah. So that juggernaut sure is taking a beating without really taking a beating. Then the griffin moves up and attacks the other juggernaut. Now remember, we've got um, the cumulative here. We've got the synergy going on. So I believe at this point it is plus one to his attack and damage. And he does five points of damage. And then he does a second attack. Now it doesn't accumulate for each attack. It's just each model. So this Arcanist gives a focus to this Griffin, who is then going to charge. He does have reach. And so he can attack that Juggernaut over there. And he's got plus two to his attack and damage. So he only needs double ones. And he hits. And uh, because it was a charge attack, he actually did you know, six damage. But now the next guy gets plus three to his attack and damage. But as he's finding out right here, the Griffins, even with these bu um, buffs, are not doing very much damage. But he charges into this Juggernaut and he needs double ones, actually anything but double ones. And then it's dice minus four, but he just rolls a four. So that kind of sucks because it wasn't a charge attack. And uh, then he does a second attack and gets stationary because he's within two inches of the Juggernaut who is bonded. And then he charges in with the other one who's going to have plus four, and he's got three focus. So here's where he's hoping to do some damage. Needs anything but double ones, and then dice minus three, and does seven damage to my two. Which, you know, not bad, not bad. He does have three focus on him, so he can buy some extra attacks. He's going to do his secondary attack, his shield. Dice minus seven, so no damage there. Then he buys another attack with his uh, big ol' weapon. And he hits, and dice minus three, but only two damage. So unlucky rolls here is preventing him. They're just preventing him from doing any damage. But he gets one more chance. So anything but double ones. Ooh, almost a double one there. And then dice minus three, just four. So although that average was, or that roll was average, his other rolls were not. And now he is stationary for a turn, which means I automatically hit him in close combat, which is not good for him. Then he's striking with Weapon Master against Widowmaker and kills him. So those guys are kind of tar pitting each other. And then he strikes this guy with Weapon Master and he hits him and actually does some damage. Ironically, that little guy does more damage than the Griffin did. Well, the Griffin cumulatively did more damage, but that one attack did more. And then he becomes stationary because of the Bonded Warjack. That's the special rule that the Epic Warjack gets. And here he would dominate that objective, but that Juggernaut is still alive. And so he's going to be contesting it. Takes a shot at Sorsha and fails. And then we're Kador turn three. He did get a point there because he was holding the other objective. I'm gonna maintain Iron Flesh and then drop, I think that's three focus on the Juggernaut in the middle there. And these Winter Guard are gonna swing around and take a shot as Arcanist so he doesn't hold that objective anymore. And they are combining and they kill him. They should have uh, done two and two so the other two could fire at the other Arcanist, but, or Arcanist, but they didn't. And so that's too bad. And then they're swinging against the Cavalry model and they fail to wound him at all. Then the Marauder moves in 
and he attacks and um, what is going on dice minus two all right it's automatic so I didn't have to worry about boosting his melee attack rolls which is why I did not drive him and uh, he smacks him a couple times wears off a bit of his damage and then he takes a third attack because of Jack, Jack Marshall but rolls pretty crappy for his actual damage so we're gonna drive these two jacks needs nine or less and luckily gets it hasn't failed it yet goes to drive the other one and also makes that one and so those jug those juggernauts are gonna be hitting hard and hitting it easily and then he gets a free strike or he gets an automatic hit and does an immense amount of damage I think that was what did he roll 16 minus 3 so it'd be 13 damage 13 damage so it hits him nice and hard there then the juggernaut gonna swing at the other Griffin because that guy is pretty much crippled but he misses and then he attacks again with his fist and he hits or sorry, the first one's his fist is the one that missed. And then the second one's his axe and only does five damage. And then he takes his third attack for being Jack Marshall. He hits and it's dice plus one and that's going to be nine. So I guess it was his axe that missed and it was his fist that hit. Otherwise it would have been more damage the second time around. And uh, disables his movement at least. So his defense is dropped and he won't be able to uh, run or charge. So that's good, except he's already in my face. So it won't matter too much on his turn. It'll just matter more in my turn. Trying to kill this one sentinel. I need to get eights to hit him, and I failed all three times. Other Juggernaut moving up, taking a swing at his Phoenix, and he hits him. Dice plus one, so ten to his three. I'm wondering if I should have used my feet this turn rather than last turn. I think it was a little premature, and uh, would have been doing way more damage here. But it's hard to tell. It's always hard to tell. Dice minus three for the damage, and only do three that time. But I do have one more attack because he's Jack Marshall, and he hits, and it's dice plus one, so that'll be seven to his two. And so that cripples his cortex and his movement and his generator, so he is in trouble. Sorsha is going to go in and try to finish him off, keeping the focus necessary to be able to cycle him back out of there. Gets double six, so he becomes stationary because she has critical stationary, but fails to do any damage, but she'll cast Cyclone and jump on back so that she doesn't have to worry about getting hit. So most of, most of his guys are stationary right now, which really sucks for him um, because... Oh yeah, seeing stationary sucks. Jack Marshall moves in, automatically hits this guy, and automatically kills him. And then, um, what's going on there? The Juggernaut is taking his attack, automatically hits because the guy is stationary and um, does a bit of damage. And then it's his other initial and automatically hits as well and does another five damage. And, oh, what are we scratching at here? And then he buys an attack with his, with his axe, hits dice plus one damage, so nine damage. It's not going to end well for this Jack right here for obvious reasons as being hit by a juggernaut when you're a light war jack and stationary and he has three focus on him is just not good so he's gone absolutely gone so as you can see the war of attrition is going on kador's side and he doesn't have either objective this time because he doesn't control the one uh, both of them i'm within four inches of and he only has his caster in one of them so it's looking pretty desperate for a retribution here and they're gonna have to try something in order to come back but we are into Retribution turn four. He's going to upkeep Synergy because he needs that little extra oomph that it gives him. And then he's going to drop some... Um, where's he going to drop that focus? He's going to give it to the Griffin over here. I think that Griffin is largely undamaged. It's hard to tell because we don't have the stack cards right in front of us. This Heavy Warjack is shifting a little bit. He's going to attack this Juggernaut, hoping to hurt him. Obviously hoping to hurt him. But only does two points of damage. But he does get the synergy in. And then he swings at one of the Winter Guard. Needs 11s to hit because of the Iron Flesh and the Bobbin Weave. Second Griffin gets plus one to his attack and damage rolls. Hits and doesn't do any damage. But does grant the synergy to the next Jack. Hits with his shield attack but does no damage either. The Arcanist moves over here so he can give a focus to the other Griffin. Or he gave him some... I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I actually don't know what he just gave him there. There is a special ability that he has, but... Um, it's something or other. Does a little bit of damage to the Juggernaut. You can see the Juggernauts are just weathering these light war jacks. Um, they, they, he really needs something that's better at punching through armor than the Griffins. And um, so yeah. And, and just so you know, I didn't know his army before I built mine. I really just built mine just to have some fun with some uh, with the Jack Marshals. But this Juggernaut is hurting. And and he's going to buy another attack and really try to kill it so he doesn't become stationary. He hits it and dice minus three. And that finishes him off. So finally that Juggernaut goes down. Took a beating, but finally went down. So nobody's going to be going stationary anymore. Takes a swing at the other Juggernaut. Or sorry, I think that was that Sorsha. Boosting the damage as dice plus three. So 10 damage to Sorsha. So she was a little exposed. She cycled into the wrong place. And so now she's in trouble. And he's buying another attack. But um, he only gets one die because he's damaged. 
So this cavalry model is going to charge Sorsha, taking some free strikes because he's desperate for a caster kill. All three of these guys get to hit him. The first one tries to hit and misses, just needs sixes. The second one tries and misses as well. And the third one tries and hits. And of course it's boosted damage, dice minus nine, and he rolls a six, six, and a five. Killing the cavalry model. Oh wait, wait, no, we forgot. It was actually dice minus 11. So he takes six damage, leaving him with two boxes. Two lousy boxes is all he's going to get. So he's going to get a swing at Sorsha. I'm needing nines, though, and misses. So after all that survival, he does not hit him. But he's not done trying yet. That one Sentinel is going to take three free strikes from the Widowmakers. They need sixes to hit. The first one misses again. The second one hits. And then dice minus eight, and I roll enough to kill him. So he's really trying. He's hurling his guys over at my caster, but it just didn't go. He We drop Iron Flesh here because at this point I don't really need it. Sorsha advances and wants to go both for his caster and also just to dominate that objective because casters do not contest objectives. Takes a swipe and kills the one and then goes to boost to attack his caster and fails because they just rolled really bad. Then I use Cyclone to get up a little closer and then attack the caster again and actually manage to hit him. And it's going to be boosted damage, dice minus five, but it roll really bad, only get one damage to his caster. But I do have one more attack. And so I'll take another swing, hit, and then dice minus five again, but actually roll 11. So do six damage to his caster. Does leave my caster a little exposed, but um, I do have backup for him. So we're going to try to kill this Griffin here. The ja oh, sorry, the Jack Marshall is marshalling first or driving first, and he gets it. Once again, I didn't fail any of the leadership tests for that, which is very, very fortunate. And then... <laughs> Jack Marshall swings and kills the, the Griffin without any problems. So there's another wreck marker. This ja and then the Juggernaut turns and attacks the other Griffin, getting boosted attacks. That's a double, so it's going to be stationary. Or critical, I should say. And it's dice plus one. It does an immense amount of damage, almost killing it. Only two boxes left, but he gets a swing with his fist. And he hits and kills because he hits automatically. So that one's gone as well. Then going for this Griffin. So it's just going all downhill for retribution at this point. Dice plus three, 11 damage. Doesn't kill that griffin, but as you can see, disables his cortex, everything down to one box. Then swing with my fist, and I hit, and it's dice minus one. And I think that would be an automatic kill no matter what. And so there goes another one. We actually ran out of uh, wreck markers. So, not looking too good for, um, for retribution here. And then my Jack Marshall moves up, takes a swing at his his epic caster and hits, just barely, but hits, and does a huge amount of damage. Dice minus three, kills his caster, and that is game. So tough game for Syra. They had a close call with almost being able to kill my caster, but unfortunately we're not able to pull it off, and it's just too much of bad luck with the with my free strikes. Well, good luck for me, bad luck for him, and then bad luck when he actually managed to swing at Sorsha. All right, Vault members, if, if you are a Vault member, go to the post-game show now. You can watch us talk with the tactics and the what-if scenarios and what we could do differently and blah, 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 and all that fun stuff that we do in post-game. So go to the Vault now, miniwargaming.com slash vault. If you're not a Vault member, you can join for a seven-day free trial to get instant access to this post-game show, plus all sorts of other battle reports quick tips, painting tutorials, train tutorials, and all sorts of other things. So go check it out now at miniwargaming.com slash vault trial, or if you want a free DVD, go to miniwargaming.com slash free DVDs. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming. Happy Wargaming.